Okay, let's go through the types of natural selection. Before I start, it's really important to, rec to realize that natural selection and evolution is, is not a conscious or deliberate or active process. Right? It's not individuals deciding to evolve, but it's rather something, the small unit which a natural selection can happen is population-wide. If you want more information, oops, if you want more information on that, I really recommend Sal's, Sal's video, so go check that out. If uh, you're not too clear, insanely interesting topic. By the way. So when we think about natural selection, um, I mean, I'm sure you you you've heard that the example of uh, the peppered moths uh, in England, or the uh, the giraffe, the famous poem of the giraffe's neck. When we think about those examples, we think about directional selection. I'll write that in green here. Wait a second. Directional. I'm having a hard time here. Directional. So we have some some straight some trait might be a say take the the giraffe's length giraffe's um, length of neck. And for some trait, they're, they're small. And then there's large, and most individuals are somewhere in between, and it, like, whatever, bell curve. You get get a sense of what that means. It might be that over time, one specific gene, uh, what was sorry, one specific trait, is systematically favored by the environment, as was the case with the pepper moths or the um, the giraffes, and so this curve moves, so that the the majority of individuals now have a longer neck or a blacker. If this say what this would be a scale of the color of the pepper moths, there, there's still variation, right? There's still the same number of variation, but there's a, a change in direction. So that, that would be in essence the most uh, most typical example of natural selection. Two other examples I'll scroll down here are so you might have stabilizing stabilizing versus diversifying diversifying selection or that disrupt So, let's draw the same graph. It might be that the, the environmental condition, I'll draw this one gray too. Wow, it's a terrible bell curve, but you get the concept then, I'm sure. So it might be that the environment selects against the extremes, um, that the, sort of that the, the it's, it's pushing for very narrow, narrow fields. So so the environment is selecting for more average people, a lot more of them, and less of these these extremes. So it's it's stabilizing the, the, the there's less diversity as well, right? So it's making one particular street very standard and very most probably because it's much better to thrive in the environment than any of these. It's vastly, vastly better. Another example where we could could have something uh, the opposite actually. Same thing, I'll draw this. Draw tentative. Well, I'll also try something else. Okay, so we have the same, uh, same concept if you want of this bell curve. And there might be, for some reason, there might be a need of, of, uh, of diversity or evolution in this population. So, what will happen is something like this. Where the extremes, where the environment selects for the, these extremes, but these extremes are more favorable to survival than this, than the middle condition. So, uh, over time, this 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 will go deeper and deeper and deeper, and you might eventually get get two entire different species for whatever reason that might be. Right? Um, it might be that there's a change here, and this trait is. Is leading to the demise of the species. So 
some portion of the population is developing this other trait to survive and some portion is developing this other trait and eventually we might have two dif entirely different species or if it's or it might say the same species but we'll, we'll get these two camps if you want so it's diversifying you might think of it as, as divergent evolution as well this is what it looks like on a, on a graph hope that makes sense for you so let's go on here and uh, Let's talk about what creates variation in a population. The easiest example is gene mutation. So just randomly, by chance, we have mutation in our, in, in our genes, and mostly point mutations. And because of that, just randomly, people are different, right? And I mean, not just because of this, but because of that, and those differences might help us drive, or they might undermine our survival. And if they do, we'll pass it on to our children, and they'll have more. And you get the concept, I'm sure. So that's a most uh, most evident example. <coughs> Another example, sorry. Something that's more difficult to understand is genetic drift. So this idea that we might have variation in the population because of one-time environmental conditions. So I'll give you two, uh, separated into it's probably going to be much clearer. Um, here, let me put this in here. So two ways that might happen. There's the, the bottleneck effect. Bottleneck. And the founder effect. So the bottleneck effect is, say there's these, they have this, this population of people and there's a big natural disaster. So a lot of people will die in that disaster, but what's really important here is non-selectively, just randomly. Right, a lot of these uh, these individuals will perish in whatever, whatever condition, short-term condition happens here. And because of that, the end result, the genetic pool after this one-time catastrophe will be different than what it was originally. I'm not sure if, if that makes a lot of sense. So you'll have, you'll have because of this one-time event, you'll, the gene pool is going to change completely, or com not completely, but to some extent it will change. Another example here, so if we go in the, the, the founder effect, if we have some uh, some colony of individuals or some some group of individuals going to colonize uh, far off territory, it's very likely that a few group of people will go off and and, and uh, reproduce to form this new population at some distant geographic place. <coughs> what happens is these whatever, four or five, or maybe 20 or 100, these people are not representative. These individuals are not representative of larger humanity. And as they go reproduce here, a lot of these few individuals' genes will appear there. And this population will be much, much different than the population from where they're from. Right? Because this, this group is not a representative sample of the larger uh, the larger population where they're from. 